they were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. And they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils, and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan. And the land was polluted with blood. Thus were they defiled with their works, and went whoring with their own inventions. Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people, insomuch that he abhorred his own inheritance. Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. I do apologize for this windy day. Um, I came out here to do a video, and there's nothing I can do about the wind, but anyway, we're going to get on with this message. The opening verse I read was the book of Psalms, chapter uh, 106. It was talking about how the Israelites, God's people, learned the ways of the heathen. Specifically, it says they sacrificed their sons and their daughters to false gods. And it even talks about how they turned to whoredom. You know, ever since Roe vs. Wade, back in 1973, over 60 million children have been killed. That's about 1.3 million children every year for the past 45 years. You know, to give you a comparison, the Holocaust only lasted 12 years, and it's estimated that between 6 to 17 million Jews were killed. Even if we take that high number, the 17 million, you're looking at 1.4 million people killed during the Holocaust every year for 12 years. That's about exactly the same rate as what we're looking at with the abortion. That's why I call it the abortion Holocaust. That's why I call it World War III, you know. Many women today are having abortions more than ever. You know, I read a statistic that said 25% of women have admitted to having at least one abortion in their lifetime. You know, and if they aren't aborting their kids, They'll just use birth control. They'll pop them pills and they'll kill their baby inside the womb. You know? And birth control doesn't stop conception. All it does is kill the baby after it's conceived. You know, that little embryo. In its first stages, it just destroys it. It makes the womb a tomb. And, and, and it's turning uh, all these women barren. You know, I read a statistic... Um, wow, I told you 60% of women use birth control. Or did I say that? 60% of women nowadays use birth control. So you compare that with the 25% that had abortions. I mean, you could almost say that, what is that, 85% of women are just killing off their kids, man. They're destroying their womb. You know, you see, God told us to be fruitful and multiply. And I believe, you know, I believe that. I believe that God's plan is for man and woman to get to me to get together get married and have and have children right and i believe that people who advocate for abortion and use birth control and even people who use condoms are falling victim to whoredoms just like the bible said in my opening um verse right you know people want to sleep around they want to go from partner to partner you know and have fornication well that's a sin the bible says you know they don't want the responsibility of marriage you know the commitment you know, the dedication, the determination to stay with somebody, you know, and raise children. You know, and some people would argue that this is child sacrifice. And out of greed and out of selfishness, these people just want to um, turn to whoredom, right? They want to um, neglect their duty of raising children. Sorry, I don't know. This guy's coming up. All right, anyways, you know, people destroy their offspring so that they can avoid the duty of raising children. But, you know, I was thinking, child sacrifice, child sacrifice. Well, Jesus, Jesus said he was our sacrifice. He was our sacrifice um, slain one for all, right? So that all may have life. And I remember, you know, and I'm going to read a quote, uh, quote Jesus' words here in, in Luke chapter 22. He said, at the Last Supper, he said, he took bread, gave thanks, break it, and gave to them, saying, This is my body, which is given 
to you, do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, he also um, took the cup and said, this is the cup of my new testament in my blood, which is shed for you. You see, Jesus willingly gave himself for us as a sacrifice, right? He didn't go unwillingly. He willingly laid his life down for us with his pure, innocent, sinless blood. He laid his, his life down voluntarily so that we who believe on him might have life everlasting. See, the difference is, you know, many ways we can look at abortion in the same way. People sacrificing their children, but you know, these children, they're not doing it voluntarily, right? So that's why I call it murder, right? It's not a voluntary thing where um, these kids are laying down their life so their parents could have a better life. Right? But the difference is, unlike the sacrifices of the Old Testament, right, where God, yeah, you know, God did uh, say, hey, go out and um, slaughter a sheep, or slaughter a goat, and, and, and offer it up as a sacrifice. But these were animal sacrifices, right? They were never sacrificing human beings, children. Anytime in the Bible you see people sacrificing kids to the Lord, it's seen as an abomination, right? And in the same way, I would argue that, you know, these women who remain single, who remain childless and go into the workforce, you know, they are literally sacrificing. They're making a big sacrifice. They're sacrificing their own children, their own families. You know, now, now I'm not to, I'm not going to dog the women, you know, who who maybe can't find a husband or maybe their husband died or, you know, whatever, something like that. But for the vast majority of women, you know, there's plenty of men out there to get married to. And, you know, that's a totally different story if you're um, avoiding marriage by going into the workforce and, and using birth control and, and sleeping around like a whore versus somebody who just can't find a husband, right? And she's a virgin and she's trying to find a husband, but she can't do it. So she's got to go out there and work and provide for herself. You know, those are two different circumstances. But, you know, these women out here, these feminist women will have you believe that they're making a big sacrifice, right? By, oh, they're doing so much hard work by going to school, getting their education, getting their career. But you know what? I'm, I'm seeing through those lies now, you know. They want me to believe that their hard work is sacrificed and it's honorable. But you know what? These same women are the same women who sacrifice her youth, who sacrifice her fertility, and sacrifice her family, even her own children, her own husband, in pursuit of a career. You know, in order to accomplish her so-called education and get her so-called degree, right? That frankly, God never told them to, uh, to seek after, Right? God never said to go do that. God said you ought to get married, bear children, and guide the house. You know, the woman was created for the purpose of helping her man, helping her husband. That, that's what God created Eve for in the first place, to be a help meet for Adam, right? And these women of today are completely rejecting God's natural plan, what God has planned out for us. You know, guys, my point of my video is this. I'm trying to bring awareness to this, to this modern day child sacrifice that's going on, you know, to these false gods, to these idols. You know, ask yourself, you know, when did women, <laughs> when did women becoming a wife and a mother, you know, and being a homemaker lose its value? You know, these women nowadays, they want to be career women, you know, and, and they want to be, uh, ex they want the expectation that we're going to treat them with just as much honor as a mother, as a homemaker, as a wife, you know, you got to choose one or the other, you know, which one are you going to sacrifice? Which one does God want you to choose, you know? See, we are not, we don't want to fall into the same sin the Israelites did back then, you know, we don't want to learn the ways of the heathen. You know, they sacrifice their own children. You know, are we not falling into the same whoredom that they did by aborting our kids, by using these condoms, using these birth controls? Is this not seen as a sacrifice? Can you not see it? I can. You know, I remember my grandmothers, both of my grandmothers, you know, they got married young. You know, they didn't, neither one of them even graduated, I think, the seventh grade because they got married and started a family, started having kids, right? I wouldn't be here today if they didn't do that. 
You understand? You know? And, and, you know, it was seen as perfectly normal, perfectly honorable back then. But, you know, these women of today, they're trying to tell me, oh, no, your grandmothers? No, they were oppressed. You know, they, they, they didn't have the opportunity to go to work. It's like they didn't need to. They were, they were working for God. They were raising a family. That was work. That was an honorable work, you know? They weren't oppressed. You know, that's a lie what these feminists are trying to tell me. That was a lie because both of my grandmothers, honorable women very honorable very respectable and you know what my whole family cherishes them you know I, they weren't oppressed you know the whole family loves them they respect them and you know to say that they were oppressed is a lie you know and this new modern career woman she isn't sacrificing her family by having a career i believe she is sacrificing or excuse me she's not sacrificing she wants you to think that she's sacrificing, you know, something like that, that should be praised by going out and having this career. <laughs> but you know what? I think she's sacrificing her family by seeking the career. You know what I'm saying? And the root of all this is just like the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 6. It says the love of money is the root of all evil. See, these women, they're chasing money. When they chase that career, they're chasing the money. When they have that abortion, they're saying, hey, I just want more money. You know, this child's going to cost too much money. What's the Bible say? Well, the love of money is the root of all evil. And this evil, this abortion, this child sacrifice, at the root of it is just like the Bible says, love of money. Friends, I want you guys to be aware of what's going on. And I, and I challenge you that, you know, you examine yourself, right? Look within your own life and, and, and ask yourself, you know, Am I doing something because, you know, maybe I just want some more money? Maybe I just want some, some, some kind of selfishness for myself? Or am I really truly doing something because God wants me to do it? Examine yourself. Examine your own heart. Because remember, Jesus taught us how to pray the Our Father. And he said, Father, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, not our will be done. Thy will be done. We want to do your will. You know, and I don't think it's God's will to be sacrificing children. You know what I mean? So let's try to live our lives. Man, it is wind. Let's try to live our lives pleasing in his sight. You know, that's what I want to do today. Anyway, that's my message, guys. Um, I hope I hope the Holy Spirit touched your heart, maybe taught you something and maybe open up your eyes a little bit. Anyway, I'm going to get out of here and enjoy the rest of this day. Um, it's actually a nice weather, even though it's a little windy. But anyways, as usual, I'm going to give God the last word, and I'll see you guys on the next video. This is Sean Elvis signing out. Peace. I'm going to read from the uh, New Testament, the book of Romans, chapter 12. The Bible says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable, the perfect will of God. Amen. God bless.